stuff here relevant, some stuff relevant to your final practical. So I've got a pattern, one inch spacing between, and I've got an inch at the beginning and inch at, inch at the end. So um, here's what I want to, to do. I want, and so you may have to help me with this because my, my, my um, math isn't too great. So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna go back to the product level. So notice I'm sitting here at the product level. What I wanna do, and this is where it becomes relevant to your final practical, is create a product level user parameter that is going to drive the number of the number of holes in this base. And in the process, if the part will update to show the number of holes, including the beginning, uh, the ending one inch, the beginning one inch will remain there. And in addition, the pin that I have here will be in all the holes. So, so in other words, I want to be able to have just one user parameter that says number of holes. And whenever I change it to two or change it to four or change it to five, this assembly model will update. And with it, the number of pins, every hole will be populated with a pin. Okay, so that's what I want to try to accomplish. So first of all, before we get into user parameters, I've got, so let's go ahead and populate the remaining one of these holes with this pin. So by the way, so this pin, there's a pin, there's my base. The pin is in here right now with a, um, a coaxial constraint. That would be a coincident. You can see that right there. So the base is fixed. And then I have a coincident constraint there, which is coaxial. So there's a, Nice little tool that I haven't used a whole bunch. So I'm going to give it a shot. I actually practiced it today. So if I had to practice it, that means I haven't used it a whole bunch, right? Because a lot of this stuff I could do in my sleep. But this, so this is something fairly new for me. So what I can do, there is a tool here called reuse pattern. Okay, so what that will do, and what I think I need to do is pick this pattern, where am I at here? Notice I'm just selecting the pattern. I didn't go into the part, I'm still in, and still in the assembly design workbench. So I can go insert reuse pattern. Um, tell you what, let me, I'm trying to think of what I need. Like I said, this is, I didn't do this earlier today. So hopefully, so what I wanna reuse is going to be this pattern. Okay, ah, oh, there you go. It's, it, it, it actually worked fairly intuitively. All I had, let me back up for a second to do that though. So I have nothing selected right now, okay? But I am in the product level. If I go insert user parameter, and then I select this parameter. Yeah, see it's not doing anything. So what I need to do is pre-select the pin. Okay, so I pre-select. I'm just making sure I know what I'm doing here. So I'm pre-selecting the pin, not double selecting it to get into the part design workbench. As you may recall, I can get into the part design workbench on this pin by just double selecting here, but I want to be in the product. So I'm just going to select the pin, make sure it's orange. Then I'm going to go reuse pattern, and then I can pick my pattern. Ah, oh, and there you go, and it populates it. Hit OK. And it's looking good so far. So what my objective is, is I want to automate this process. Right now it's three, let's say I make it four. So when I did that, notice I had a pattern added, but the part length did not increase. So what I have to do there is I've got to add another inch. So, to make that part update, and then if I go back to my product, 
I have to do it update and then we'll update because I have automatic up, I had manual update turned off. So I had to manually update that. But see how it repopulated that fourth one. So there's some issues here, not some issues, but some things I have to think about is when I create my user parameter, not only does my user parameter, which is going to drive the number of instances here, my rectangular pattern, but it should also update this length here. So we have to think about what is an equation or a formula for this five. And it's a quite simple formula. I made it simple on purpose. I've got four parts. So it's going to be essentially four plus one. Okay. So I did that intentionally uh, just to make it easier. So I need a formula to drive this. So the formula to drive the number of instances in my a user parameter to drive the number of instances in my pattern. And then also a formula to drive that. Okay, so all from the product level, not from the part level. I don't even want to go into the part after this. So uh, I'm wondering here, I haven't tried this. I'm going to go back to my pattern and decrease it to four. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure I know what's going to happen. I didn't think about this, but let's do an update. Ah, good. It went away. I was wondering if that extra pin went away. And it did. So any questions about what I'm trying to accomplish here in my little demonstration? Again, capturing design intent here and creating this part so we can have a flexible design with it. So let's let's create the user parameter we already know how to do a user parameter but this is different because this is at the product level it's not at the part level so uh but it works the same way so i need a user parameter that's going to essentially control the number of instances here on my rectangular pattern but it's at the product level so let's create a user parameter you do it just like you've created other user parameters. You're going to need to know how to do this. And let me tell you, you're going to need to know how to do this for your final practical. So I'm going to do a, a formula. It's going to be a user, a new parameter of type integer. Because it's a number of holes. This is going to control the number of holes on my bolt circle. Not about bolt circle, on my pattern, in my pattern. So that's an integer. It's going to be either one or two or three or four or five, right? Now, I'm going to I'm going to do a multiple value just because that's what I want to do with this one. And so I want to make my pattern possibilities two, three, four, or five. So I'm limiting myself to two, three, four, or five. And you're going to need to know how to do this too. So new param new parameter type integer multiple values. When I hit that, I go three, four. That's it two, didn't I as well? Two and five. And I can move two back up. So two, three, four, five. Those are my possible values. And let's name it something intuitive. Number of holes. Number of pens like that. Okay. Now, see this little, there's my little branch here for parameters, number of pens. So I've got two, three, four, or five. Now, listen to this carefully. I think I will if I do this on the final practical. All right. You got this doesn't show up by default. I'm telling you now how to get it to show on your tree. If you ask me during the final practical, I'm going to say I can't help you with that because I'm telling you now how to do it. So you may want to take a little notes, and I think maybe even it's in the directions. Um, but so to get this to show, you got to go tools, options, and you may recall back when we worked with user parameters and formulas, we went under part infrastructure and display, and we checked these three. Well, this is a little different because we're working under the product now. So you got to go to product structure. 
I did show you this yesterday, I believe, but and then you got to go all the way to the right here and go tree customization and make sure that parameters and you may as well make sure that really all four of these right here are activated with a yes. Uh, especially this parameter one for this case. So you can deactivate it or activate it. So in th every, these four need to be yeses. And you see it sitting here now. So now comes the, uh, now what we need to do is have this drive the number of instances in my pattern. And to do that is you got to create a formula. And so the formula is as before, except this time you kind of got to do it the long method since you have to be, listen to this carefully, okay? Listen to this carefully. I'm, just, I'm telling you, don't ask me this on the final because I can't help you. You've got to be able, you've got to be in the product when you do this. You can't be in the part. So you got to be in the assembly design workbench. You can't be in the product design workbench. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go uh, formula. And I'm going to now, with that, I'm just going to select this pattern. And notice it filters down to that, and there's my number of instances value, which is three. And I can go add formula, and I can just make that equal to number of pins. That's okay. We're going to update here, and it must be set at two because it changed to two. It is set at two. I can make it three. Let me turn manual update. I'm going to turn manual update. Um, off if I remember how to do it. There it is. I'm going to turn on automatic update. So now it will update automatically. So now when I change my number of pens, it updates. And it's going to go off the screen there. But that's pretty cool that you can do that. And it would just here in the product level. I think it's cool. But you know, I'm a I'm a CAD nerd, so um, now one more thing we got to do here, as I mentioned, is I've got to control the length of this block based off of this. And that again is just a formula. And I've already kind of given you the equation. It's the number of pins minus one. I made it really, really simple. So let's do a formula again. And I can touch off here just to bring up the five. Then I can select the five. And it shows it here being selected. Then I can go add formula. And what I can do is I can make number of pins. Now, this may cause an issue, but I'm just going to see if it will work. And I'm just going to go plus one. Now, listen to this carefully. I'm not going to enter one inch. I'm just going to enter a one, and it's going to goof up. And I want to show you what happens when it goofs up and what you've got to do here. So if I hit OK, there's the, there's the issue, a non-homogeneous units. And so notice how it made it 157.48 inches. That's not really what I'm looking for. So what happens with uh, Katia, if it doesn't know the unit you're working with, it's going to uh, think you're working in millimeters. So what I need to do with a one inch is I'm going to enter an IN next to it. And this is still probably going to give me a problem, but let's just see. It still gave me a problem. This time, though, it made it like uh, really, really 119. It's getting shorter. So the issue there is it doesn't know this number of pins. It doesn't know the, I mean, it, it's obviously what, whatever it's set at now, three or two, but it's looking at that as an integer. An integer, right? One, two, three, four. It doesn't have a length value to it. 
Think about that. It doesn't have a length unit of measure to it. It's just an integer. And so Katia is expecting a length value there. So what I can do is I can go times, there's my little asterisk, one I in. And what I just did there is I just made that number of pins and added a length unit to it. Let's see what happens. Ah, and it came back down, so it's red. Let's see, uh, and it's back to the size it's supposed to be. So now when I do number of pins, I can do a five, it updates to five. I can do a two, it changes to two. I can do a three and it changes to a three and it's working perfectly. The problem there, this is something with Katia and it's not a problem, it's just the way Katia does stuff is, let me go back into this. It's very Katia. You haven't really experienced this yet in this class, but Katia is very picky about you telling it the unit of measures you're working in. So you got it, and you're going to experience this probably if you take surface modeling, you're going to experience this in more advanced classes uh, where units are really, really important. And so here, when I'm doing this equation, essentially I've got to tell Katia, hey, I'm working in inches. So uh, number of pins is an integer. Katia is expecting that to be a length. So I turn that integer into a length value by just multiplying it by one I N. And so it multiplies it by one and then adds the I N unit of measure. And then I'm adding one to it. And unless I tell Katia what that one means, Katia doesn't know what one means. It needs a unit of measure. So I have to go one I N. If you're working in millimeters, by the way, it'd be one mm. Okay, so our centimeters, one cm. So you just have to be very, very intentional about making sure you add the unit of measures. So if you ever get that warning, that homogeneous or warning message, that's because you haven't been very, very clear about the unit of measures. And Katia is going to revert back to ISO unit of measures to include millimeters, I believe millimeters, it could be centimeters. I have to think, maybe it is centimeters, I have to think about that and or look it up. Uh, and then radians too, if you're working in degrees. So uh, that is my little solution to this little problem, a little simple problem, but it is a nice little exercise. Now, one of the reasons why I limited myself here I did two, three, four, five, and there's more ways you could have done this. I could have left this open instead of doing multiple values just to a single value, but Katia won't let me take a pattern down below two, a number of instances. So I could have, I could have done and limited my range here to two or greater, but here I just decided to to make this be two, three, four, or five. Just maybe that's just me limiting my design possibilities. But again, I can still take it down to two and the both parts update. And notice here, you know, that reuse pattern tool is coming in very handy and that's just updating my pins for me. Uh, and then uh, the user parameter, one more time, is at the product level. And then the, uh, my two relations controlling uh, the number of instances in the first direction in my a rectangular pattern is a formula, and then the length of this base part is a formula. Questions, anybody about that? <laughs> 